My talk is uh, about the Combiomet. It is the second version of a previously awarded um, Center of Excellence on Computational Biomedicine. The oops, no, it is not passing. Okay. So, well, um, as I said before, this uh, Center of Excellence was already awarded the first version in October uh, 2016. It was uh, the first in the first batch of Centers of Excellence. It, it ended in September uh, last year and restarted September last year until September 2023. Um, the, <clears throat> so, well, the, <clears throat> the motivation of Combiomed it is kind of a central hub in which, which is uh, connected to the medical regulatory authorities, the FDA or the European or the EA, EMA. Um, and also on the other side, uh, we have the connection to clinicians and um, healthcare stakeholders. Finally, is the general public. So this goes through uh, what we do is personal, personalized medicine strategies um, uh, to, give, to give back the results uh, to the stakeholders, uh, which comes in anonymized patient data. So the Combiomed central, um, central part is that what we do is HPC and high performance computing and high performance data analytic. Uh, also, there is a very important part, which is the verification, validation, and uncertainty quantification, which in biomedical, in the biomedical domain is, is indeed very important. We work on two main wings, like the monolithic codes or complex workflows, both of them because the kind of applications that we do have both of, the, of these uh, ingredients. And especially the monolithic codes, we move to the, we, we move to the exascale applications. Okay. So this is the list of the, of the participants. So um, just most of them are, well, all of them are, are well known. As you see there, are, it's a very diverse list of participants with academia. Uh, high performance computing centers like EPCC, BSC, SARA, and uh, Leibniz Supercomputing Center in, in Germany. Uh, there are some three SMEs, two very large companies. Uh, one of them is an um, infrastructure provider, and the other one is Janssen, it's a pharmaceutical company. The, the center is a UC driven center of excellence in computational biomedicine. Um, it is multi-scale and multi-physics, so I think it is uh, complementary with BioExcel. Uh, we are focused in the in the linking and in the usage of uh, solution of problems, uh, which are multi-scale and multi-physics, going from molecules to cells to tissue to organs to system and then back again. The idea is to promote the usage of HPC within the biomedical modeling community. Um, we have identified these user communities that are represented through the partners and through the associate partners in the in academia, industry, and, and clinical. So the idea is to optimize to take some of the of the codes of the core codes that we that we have in the project and optimize them um, to for existing uh, existing HPC machines and the emerging exascale architectures. Uh, so the goals is that uh, the, what we do is relevant to computational biomedicine. It is not that transversal. It's mostly focused in computational bio biomedicine, in which we have this important thing like the uncertainty quantification that we've been talking that I've been talking before. Um, it is mostly everything is well. We are focusing in, in, in multi scale, which is mostly everywhere in computational biomedicine. Uh, we, and we need to include machine learning and data analytics techniques that are specifically designed for our domain. Um, also, another important goal is to train and educate uh, the, the generations of medical professionals in this field. Uh, communication is very difficult among these, these fields that are sometimes very, very far away from each other. Uh, so it is important to train and educate them. It's sort of a we start, you start by evangelizing them, but then you go ahead and training and educate. And also to engage with industries uh, across the entire value change chain. So it is not just for clinicians, but also for every stakeholders 
in the in the chain with a strong focus in the SMEs. This is just a brief um, a brief uh, view of the work packages, except for well, work package one is the typical management uh, work package in which we include the dissemination and innovation. So we have one work package devoted to research. Um, incubator applications are uh, the idea is that all this research must be incubated in, in HPC and HPC cloud systems. Then we have another work package which is in charge of uh, deploying and analyzing the deployment and efficiency of these applications, uh, which is the operation and services. And then another one, another specific uh, one to do research on data and analytics. And finally, as I said before, we are extremely engaged in training and disseminate what we do. So this is the work package, work package six. Um, we are not, not all, com, not all um, computational biomedicine problems are multi-scale, but we are tackling those that are multi-scale and multi-physics. In this case, you have these codes, multiplicity with algorithms, multiplicity. So not all the goals are <clears throat> going to behave in the same, not at all in the same way in these systems. So we have data multiplicity also coming from the different domains and you have these complex workflows. Uh, so in the kind of problems that we are dealing with, HPC is a must from simulation to the data analysis. So the idea of CombioMed, the first one and now the second one is to pave the road to this efficient use of excess scale resources. Um, we, can, we can summarize what we do in our center uh, in this graph. On one hand, we have on, on one axis, uh, we are doing state-of-the-art research because the researchers in the center are um, at, the, at the very front end in research in Europe. And on the other hand, we have supercomputing centers and, provided, and providers that are working a lot in the emerging exascale and other novel architectures. So um, advancing in these two fronts, the idea is that we, we, everything that we do in the center must have industrial and clinical impact. So this is the service that the center uh, will provide and is providing. The center has these two um, rows and columns. Uh, we have this fast track and deep track. And then what we have done is we have um, focused in three main uh, exemplars, what we call the research, research exemplars, the cardiovascular, molecularly based medicine and neuromus neuromuscular skeletal exemplars. I will come back to this. So first of all, why exemplars? Because they are representative of the computational needs and expectations. They are multi-scale, they are multi-physics, the kind of resources usage is, is very representative. The data, it is also very representative. Each of them has its own particularities, but we think that we are covering a large, um, a large world of these, uh, of these needs. Um, then the potential to replicate the experience to other domains is really high in computational biomedicine because of this, um, of this representation. We have detected for these three uh, exemplars, we have detected a strong market and community needs. And we think that we can make clinical and industrial impact. In the cardiovascular, um, from the more technical point of view, Mostly we have fluid and solid mechanics, electrophysiology and, and body simulations. So you have sparse matrices um, and continuum mechanics, a lot of image processing, um, and the impact is, is through clinical, medtech and, and pharma. Medtech are medical devices uh, manufacturers. On the most musculoskeletal, um, it is mostly on the clinical side so far, at least what we are doing, is mostly solid mechanics with fracture and damage, Again, same as before, continuum mechanics and sparse matrices, but in this case, it, we are adding complex workflows. The codes are not, not that HPC demanding, but on the other hand, we, you have these complex workflows. And then molecular medicine, which from the, uh, from the implementation and algorithmic point of view is a very different matter, is n-body simulations in which you have minimization algorithms. So in this case, the, the parallel paradigm is, is very different than in the two, two ones before. Uh, you have ensembles and also complex workflows. And the most impact of the research that we're doing right now is on clinical and pharma. So as you see, we, we can cover a very wide range of things. So why tracks? Because it is a nice way of touch the ground running because um, 
what we do is we group the development effort by the tracks. So fast track is something that it, you can do quickly and deep track is something in which you must do some uh, research. Uh, in this case, um, it allows the, the usage and development at the same time while you're using to, in the fast track, you are, you are developing in the, in the slow track, in the deep track. Um, it is also an efficient way of, evaluate, of evaluating and allocating the, the effort. If in the future we are going to provide service, this is very extremely important. So in the fast track, uh, what we do also is we identify candidates for scaling up. Not all the candidates, not all the course that we do, uh, not all the codes that we are using are going to scale up up to exascale. So we, are, we identify them. And in the deep track, what we do is we implement and suggest for the rest of the community, uh, the scale up technology. So why is it so difficult to ride the wave, the wave of novel architectures? Um, we think we mostly work in two kinds of architectures um, from a general point of view, which is high performance cloud and exascale. So while hardware and software sometimes improve in different, uh, almost orthogonal directions, um, but well, we have to cope with this situation. The current and future hardware is the one that we have, so we must do things in order to make the, the, the best of them. Um, so there is some programming language that helps to partially fill the gap, but typically uh, these programming languages are coming at slower pace than the hardware. So heterogeneous computing uh, is evolving faster than programming languages, and so you need to be uh, really it's very difficult to ride the, the wave at the proper, at the proper point. Um, so which means that also co-design is extremely challenging. From my point of view and after these years of research in the same field, I, I see that co-design is now closer to a reality, but it is uh, than 10 years ago, but it is indeed very, very difficult. So uh, centers like ours, like uh, centers of excellence are really pushing in this direction, in the direction of co-design, in the direction that um, hardware and software uh, is, um, is going to be developed in, a, in an harmonic way. Um, well, this is just to advertise one of the reports that we have uh, written um, on, this, on, this specific, on this specific topic. Um, so in, HBC, in high performance cloud, uh, there is a need for, and, and in exascale, in both of the cases, there is a need for a deep and complete algorithm, algorithmic re-engineering. It is not that the sequential code uh, suddenly becomes uh, parallelly efficient. It is not like that. There is plenty of things to be done. And exascale is indeed orders of magnitude more complex. It is much, much more complex. So, well, this is the combined operations theater. This is what we, what we do. So the challenge is towards exascale is that at short term, um, we, we have to do all the things, especially with the load balance and memory usage, and the creation of simulation scenarios for these large scale simulations, and the capacity uh, of communication uh, within the framework, especially with, uh, with complex workflows, but also with multi-scale multi -scale and multi-physics problems. And in the medium term, well, multi-something is, uh, in gen it, it, it cannot be a bottleneck. So multi-something coupling must be done in a, in a proper way in order to not lose the efficiency that maybe you have achieved at the end of the independent parts. Um, then, well, in the, just go into the, to the exascale, we have uh, these are the codes that we are working um, in, which is Alia, MLB, Back, and Hemocell. They are of the different exemplars. They are of the cardiovascular, three of them are of the cardiovascular exemplars, but with different features and one on the, on the molecular side. And the concept we are working around is the virtual human. So the virtual human is something that uh, you need to, well, you have these patient specific models. Uh, the goal is to really reduce um, as much as possible and, and, and also refine, not only do the test that you really need for animal and human experimentation. So this will have a strong impact on the drugs and medical device, devices realm. Um, the idea is that we, we, this should reduce costs as well as patient uh, uh, expansion for the case of rare diseases. So it will reduce cost and time to market for any new product 
in which finally the the final users are the are us, the patients. It is something that you can see right now with the with this COVID um, explosion that we are uh, hurrying up to to have a vaccine which is not supposed to to come, which is supposed to come only after this pandemia is passed. Uh, so the idea is to reduce the cost and and this. This vaccine, uh, the first use, the first uh, patients that will take this vaccine as doctors can pay it. So the idea of this sort of of in silico testing is to accelerate, reduce the cost, and make this uh, for ev for everyone. Uh, well, in this virtual human, you have this multi-scale and multi-physics complex, large simulations, really from tip to toes. Uh, there is something related to this. Another morale of this COVID. Um, crisis is that it is not just to discover a vaccine, but it is also to improve the efficiency of ventilators, to study the cardiotoxicity of the different drugs that you test. So it is, uh, it is really uh, multi-scale and multi-physics complex large-scale simulations everywhere. The idea of the virtual human to the, to the left, you see, which is the, the former idea of the FDA uh, in which the, you have this laboratory, animal and human testing and, and a very small part, which is computer. But what they are saying is that these things are going to change in the future and really starting to change now, which is the human, animal and laboratory are going to be less and less present, uh, still there, of course, and the computer is going to be increased a lot. Uh, but also it appears this new player, which is the virtual patient. Um, the virtual patient is to perform these simulations now on, on virtually uh, generated patients, synthetically generated patients in which you include more and more features of the, of the patients. So these are some three examples of the things that we, that of the many things that we do. This is HemoCell in which what we do is to, to study and to simulate the um, uh, cell, at cellular level, what's happening in the in the block? This is done by in collaboration by the University of Amsterdam, University College London, and the University of Geneva. Then you have this uh, cardiovascular, also in the cardiovascular, uh, Alia Red, which is the cardiac simulator in which you can is absolutely multiphysics in which you have this electrophysiology that is contracting tissue and tissue is pumping the blood outside, um, in which you can study. Uh, as I said before, cardiotoxicity for pharma industry, but also um, um, effect effectiveness of medic different medical devices. And then at molecular medicine, uh, what we are doing is uh, with, uh, with uh, UCL um, and with Evotech, uh, a company I, I forgot to mention here, and Evotech, but um, used also by Janssen um, and the uh, UPF. So this binding affinity calculator, uh, sorry, this is not my domain, so I will go through it very rapidly. So in this case is for, uh, well, the, the binding of, of proteins using different uh, techniques. So in this case, the, it is also a very important, that's why it is this insight uh, from the Department of Energy, because it is also uh, something that it's go through, through the exascale pathway. In this case, for the musculoskeletal, it is more on a complex workflow with direct impact in the, in the clinics. So this is not that exascale, but it is um, high performance cloud mostly, and must be, well, the, the workflow is very, uh, this workflow must be, must be done in a very efficient, a very efficient way. So the user communities are, we have different user communities like academic, uh, industrial, clinical, but also the general public. So this is something that we are very, very <clears throat> aware on how to um, make uh, people understand the importance of the things that we do in, in all of the COEs, but especially in the uh, biomedical COEs. So we have produced pieces of um, dissemination, which are really very interesting and are there in the in the web, um, we have another large network of associate, part, associate partners. Uh, we cannot create a, a European project with, with uh, 50 partners, of course. So what we have done is to create a, the, the Center of Excellence with uh, 15 partners, but then to reach 
to increase our our reach with uh, by including associate partners that are that have early access to anything that we do and and which we and, and we are discussing a lot with them about uh, many different things of, of interest. Also, we have a strong collaboration with Focus COE and Brace. We have done, um, for instance, a PATC, a short course on HPC-based computational biomedicine that it is done together with Brace, Combiomed and Brace, every February here in Barcelona, which is, uh, we are having indeed an increasing uh, success. We have more and more people and, and we are very happy with it. The teachers are mostly from uh, Brace and, but especially from Combiomed uh, partners. So just to end, some success stories and bottlenecks. So success stories are mostly the kind of uh, usage that what we are doing is um, is having from different uh, different stakeholders. Bottlenecks are mostly on the regulatory authority acceptance of in silico trials, but we are working a lot on making them. They already understand the importance, but the fact is that how to include these in silico trials properly, how to include these in silico trials in the in the regulation. Uh, process. Um, the, we have learned and we are learning a lot about the requirements of the users. Uh, we have learned also that the uncertainty quantifications are essential for anything that we do, especially, and this is closely related to the confidence that the users can have. And well, the challenges are the interaction with the different groups and the, the, and the support for, for the different uh, codes and complex workflows. So we have this diversity of codes. Uh, we are doing this revolutionary, what we think is a revolutionary training program for medical students. It is done mostly driven by UCL, but it, with strong impact also in the UPF, in the Universitat Pompeu Fabra. <clears throat> it is also the proximity that we have to the different clinical stakeholders. Um, and we have this large network of, associ of associate partners, which are like our own um, they work with us, but they are also our own apostles for uh, spreading the news. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mariano, for this uh, really comprehensive and, and really interesting presentation about the, the Computational Biomedicine Center of Excellence. If there is any questions, please just raise them in the chat uh, forum that we have open. If not, just let me ask you, Mariano, one, one short question. You talk about uh, evangelization, education of, uh, let's say, the practitioners, the doctors, the, the pharmaceutical industry, and so on. So what do you think, I mean, I mean in which degree do you think this is a, the, the big barrier towards promoting this kind of technology and also towards exascale adoption uh, for the new companies? Do you think that really this, this personal barrier and personal, I would say, um, uh, not, not, not understanding properly the HPC world can, can be a barrier for, for your project. Yes, absolutely. The, um, the, the Center of Excellence, I think that it is a very interesting um, initiative from Europe in, in many ways, but one way is also to try to streamline um, the communication because these are what we are doing is very multidisciplinary and we know that we that we can help a lot uh, but uh, it is very difficult to establish the proper communication between the different stakeholders and we we can work um, all our life in something that it is very interesting and very important but if no one understands its importance okay it's fine but uh, it will be more kind of a um, sort of selfish. So the idea is that uh, with these centers of excellence, we need to, we are, uh, I think, um, I hope, we are uh, demolishing these barriers, but in any case, it's indeed a bottleneck. It's, it goes slow, but, but well, it's steady. <laughs>